Today, Governor Asa Hutchinson gave the go ahead for Arkansas restaurants to open their doors on May 11th. There are some restrictions, though. Tonight, we want to hear from you. Will you go to restaurants that open on May 11th? Go to THV11.com slash vote and please weigh in. And as THV11's Melissa Zigowitz explains, not everyone is excited to get back to business. Yeah, although restaurants would have to operate under very strict guidelines, all of the restaurant owners that I spoke with say there's just no way they would feel comfortable opening up in less than two weeks. You know, we don't want to jump the gun. Jack Sundell, owner of the Rue Cafe and Mockingbird in downtown Little Rock, has no plans to reopen his restaurants on May 11th. Doing curbside was one thing, but having people come to the, you know, the patio or the dining room, sit down and eat, and then us cleaning up after them, but that's a really different set of circumstances. Restaurants can only allow 33% of its customers inside and there must be physical distancing between customers and tables. Face masks are encouraged and no groups larger than 10. But Sundell feels Arkansas still has too many cases to even think about opening his doors. We are going to wait and see what feels right based on uh, the uh, CDC guidelines. I'm in my 65th year. Uh, the last thing I want to do is let a lot of bunch of people in the door that can kill me. Gio Bruno, owner of Bruno's in downtown Little Rock, believes opening up restaurants is a premature decision and plans on sticking to curbside. The whole thing about reopen back up, I'm not sure when that can happen. But businesses are eligible for up to $100,000 through a state grant to help them reopen. That amount of money is a big deal for owners like Sundell and Bruno, who have had to lay off workers. So there are going to be a lot of unknown expenses and you know, if this grant can help offset some of those, it can really uh, that can really help uh, some businesses get back on their feet. In Little Rock, Melissa Zigowitz, THV 11 News. Melissa, thank you. Here's a reminder on other announcements we expect from the governor this week. Tomorrow, we're expecting some sort of announcement about the reopening of gyms in Arkansas. Then on Friday, the governor will tackle barbershops and salons. Here's a look at the numbers tonight in Arkansas. There are 3,207 total COVID-19 cases, 59 confirmed deaths. 93 people are hospitalized tonight. 18 of them are on ventilators. Nearly 1,300 Arkansas people have recovered from this virus. Five of the reported deaths are out of Jefferson County, including four at a nursing home in Whitehall. The outbreak in Cummins Prison is just over the border in Lincoln County, and those numbers make Pine Bluff look like a hot spot. THV 11's Rolly Hoyt found out, though, that that is discouraging to city leaders. The hospital behind me is called Jefferson Regional, and that word regional can be a double-edged sword. You see, there are hot spots in the area that are being applied to the city of Pine Bluff, and it's a harsh light. But some here see it as a chance and an opportunity to show the city's strength in the midst of the national crisis. We've been trying to take away some of the negative stigma that Pine Bluff has been branded with for many years, and it's almost as if we can't get away from it. A discouraged Mayor Shirley Washington reacting to the way her city is being characterized. It's the third hottest hot spot for coronavirus in the country, but that's not actually Pine Bluff. There's a spike in deaths in the waters of Whitehall Nursing Home, next town over, and rural Lincoln County, home of Cummins Prison, is technically a Pine Bluff suburb. But it's all the way over in Lincoln County. It's over in the Grady community. And then for us to be branded with that, those numbers, you know, I think is just so unfortunate for Pine Bluff. To be sure, the city isn't an oasis, and Jefferson Regional is treating many of the 100-plus positive patients. At one point, that included State Rep Vivian Flowers. Emotionally, um, I am, I, I'm worrying, or not worrying, but concerned. The District 17 Democrat says supporters are among the positive staff at the nursing home, but she is less worried about the national attention the hot spots are getting. She's focused on where the city fits in the national fight. I don't know if it's as much of a poor reflection as it is just impact from something that is happening worldwide. This is a global pandemic. People of Pine Bluff, we're resilient, we're strong. The people who are here are um, good people, hard workers, and we love, we love our city. In Pine Bluff, Rolly Hoyt, THV 11 News.
The city of Little Rock is making moves to combat COVID-19. The Small Business Emergency Assistance Program helps to well, hopes to help struggling businesses. They can apply for a zero interest loan up to $5,000. The city is also partnering with UAMS to provide a mobile testing site for the southwest part of the city. It's also launching a reusable mass distribution program that this is happening this Friday at several Kroger locations. We have details on all of these announcements on THV11.com. Self quarantine is causing cabin fever for some of us and our DC investigative team found that all of that boredom has led to a lot more drinking. New tonight, Eric Flack uncovers the sharp rise in alcohol sales and potential consequences of a coronavirus alcohol binge. It's 80s night and this group of high school friends is rolling back the clock. Clubs may be closed because of coronavirus, but that isn't stopping the party. Wine. Wine I spritz. Didn't, really. I didn't do wine. And the wine was actually pretty good without the spritz. The drinks are flowing for this socially distanced night out. In fact, the ladies tell us COVID-19 may be keeping people in, but it's not exactly keeping them dry. Has the quarantine slowed anybody's drinking in this group? No, yeah. 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 Great. Absolutely. going out of control. Yeah. Our glass yeah. recycling bit is over full all, every, the two cans are full every week of yeah. bottles. We had a whiskey party. Turns out they are not alone. Yeah. Even social media taking notice. Do you want to start drinking? I know that it is only noon. We studied the numbers and discovered when people heard shutdown, many reacted with two other words. Beer run. Data obtained by WUSA 9 reveals the week Governor Hogan closed bars and restaurants in Maryland, liquor stores in Montgomery County toasted a 46% increase in sales over the same time period the previous year. That same week in Virginia, alcohol beverage control says they saw a nearly 60% spike in sales statewide, even though Governor Northam's shuttering of restaurants and bars was still a couple days away. We don't know what happened here in the district because D.C. isn't a state. Liquor store sales aren't reported. There is some evidence that the spike in alcohol sales was more about people stocking up than staying drunk all day. After that initial surge, sales have come back down a little bit. Still, addiction experts are worried, especially for those who are already having a tough time controlling their alcohol use. Addiction is a disease of isolation. Um, kind of by definition, an increased stress burden, meaning when folks are more isolated, when folks are more stressed, that is when relapses tend to happen. In fact, the recovery community is using those same Zoom meetings popular with virtual happy hours to keep people from relapsing. But the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration told us the data shows people are struggling. They've seen an 891% increase in calls to its disaster distress hotline. The assistant secretary for mental health and substance abuse telling us those aren't all alcohol related calls, but there is certainly a connection. When you're confined to your home and when alcohol is made easily available, you may end up binge drinking most days. That contributes to the development of alcohol use disorders in these times when people are not able to do their regular daily routines. And none of that is lost on those girls we visited with back at the 80s party. In fact, Kim, a mother of three, told me that these virtual meetups aren't just about the cocktails as much as they are about the people that she's sharing them with. We're meeting up two, three times a week. Yeah. You know, checking in, how you doing, having a much needed beverage <laughs> and just, you know, reconnecting. So it's great. If you need help with drinking, head to our website right now. We have a link to those virtual recovery meetings Eric just told you about. We also have a list of resources to help you cope with the stress of the quarantine without alcohol. For our fellow Arkansans, uh, sat down uh, with their families, wrote cards, letters, paintings, poetry uh, to complete strangers. 
Arkansas Hospice delivered its first batch of cards of kindness to nursing home residents at Alcoa Pines Health and Rehabilitation today. It's part of Arkansas Hospice's new program aimed at connecting with nursing home residents who are unable to see visitors due to social distancing and COVID-19 precautions. Families are getting creative to celebrate big milestones right now, and our Craig O'Neill is joining us tonight with yet another pandemic party. Two words I never thought I would ever put together, Craig. <laughs> I understand. These parties, though, Amanda, they never get old because I love watching how people respond, especially to birthdays. And the latest incarnation of that happened in Midtown Little Rock at 4 p.m. today. We're going to meet Arkansas's newest 13-year-old, Drew Gwynn. He has tons of fans who organized a birthday drive-by, and he, he's used to fans screaming his name. He's an accomplished soccer and basketball player at the Anthony School. I wonder what young Drew will remember years from now about this moment. He gave us a... They were yelling happy birthday and hoping I had a good day, and some of them were telling me to do my homework again. So they were just encouraging me to have a happy birthday, even though we're having the coronavirus. Well into the night, you know, you look at videos like that and you hear people talking about opening America back up and you look at all those people responding and you have to believe I'm just not real sure. America was ever closed. We'll be right back.